Welcome to part two of lecture three of left body aerodynamics. So in general, the flow field around a car contains some pretty complex features. In general, the flow is three dimensional and has some regions at least in which it's unsteady. Um, so we've got our vehicle moving along the ground um, with some flow apparently coming at it, which is equivalent to the speed at which the vehicle is moving forward. And there's regions where there may be local flow separations due to sharp edges. There's a relatively complex re, uh, interaction between the underbody of the vehicle and the road. There's the impact of the rotating wheels and tires and how those uh, generate uh, essentially drag flow around with them. And there's the vehicle weight. Uh, and all these need to be dealt with if we want to get an accurate uh, simulation of uh, the, the flow around the vehicle. So of course, we, we could try to do this with a brute force approach, right? We, we could just try to solve the full Navier-Stokes equations. And technically, you can do this. Um, and it's not uh, conceptually difficult. And this is called direct numerical simulation. But the cost to do this is absolutely immense because of the very fine spatial and time resolution needed in order to resolve all of the important turbulent fluctuations. And if we try to take this kind of approach without that very fine resolution, we'll either get an unstable solution that will, will fail or we'll get a completely meaningless answer. So there's no industrially relevant context in which direct numerical simulations are done in the design pro uh, cycle. Various simplifications are always employed instead. So for flows around cars, we can look at a couple of different relevant approaches. The most frequent one we might adopt is to neglect all the time variations in the flow. So we look at steady computations. Also, we typically will model the effect of turbulence on the mean flow, either in the steady or unsteady case. And this is called uh, Reynolds average uh, Navier-Stokes equation solutions, which may or may not be unsteady. So RANs or URANs. Or an alternative approach is we can resolve the very large turbulent structures, but still model the impact of the small ones. And that's called large eddy simulation. That's much more expensive than RANs or URANs, but more accurate, and in some cases may be justified. But all of these approaches introduce differences between the solution obtained and the full details of reality. And the importance of those details in terms of things like determining what the drag coefficient of the car is can vary. Sometimes they matter a lot and sometimes they don't matter much at all and the predictions are very accurate. In addition, we also have to implement our solution into a computer program. Um, and solving the equations on the computer basically involves dividing up the fluid region of interest into a very large number of quite small control volumes. And the, the finite size of these control volumes introduces some error into the solution. And also how the equations are solved in, can introduce error. Um, the details of numerical methods for the solution of partial differential equations is way beyond the scope of this course. Um, but there are courses and books about this. Um, uh, but I think the important takeaway is that uh, typically there's a trade-off between how stable the solution is uh, and how accurate it is. And making solutions be very stable can involve essentially smearing out effects um, that can lead to quite large differences between the real flow field and what you get out of your computation. So there's a trade-off there, and there's always some error that's going to be present. 